Hello everybody, this is Jesse, and today we're going to cover how to install NCPA, the NCPA agent, on a Linux machine. Specifically, we'll be using a CentOS 6 machine. Uh, you can also install NCPA on a Debian-based machine, such as Debian, Ubuntu, or potentially Linux Mint. And you can also install NCPA on OS X. I've also seen it running on BSDs, so feel free to try it on whatever you'd like to try it on. In this case, most of our clients use CentOS or Red Hat Enterprise Linux. This procedure will work on both of them. So first things first, let's log into our machine. And we're logged in here. We're in the temp directory, as you can see. And I'll check on the CentOS version of this machine by catting etsy star r-e-l-e-a star. And here we can see we're running CentOS release version 6.6. .6. And we'll need to know whether or not this machine is 32 or 64 bit. Uname-A will give us that information right here at the end, x86-64. This is indeed a 64-bit system. Now that we've determined we're running CentOS 6 and it is 64-bit, we will copy this 64-bit link and paste it into our terminal. We can use Control-A to get to the beginning of this line. And now we will paste this RPM command in. This RPM command actually will go ahead and install this package via the internet. So we'll paste this RPM command, and what we're going to do is quote this URL, or double quote it. So double quote the URL. After that has been done, go ahead and press Enter, and RPM, uh, which stands for RPM Package Manager, is going to reach out to this URL on the internet and install NCPA via this, uh, via this URL. There you can see NCPA is installing, and it's starting a listener, and it's starting a passive agent as well. So next thing, we'll need to modify a config file, which you can feel free to just copy directly out of there. It's an user local NCPA. Vim into that file, and we'll need to find the directive for community string. You can use the arrow keys to navigate if you'd like. I always just like to search, and we'll search for community string. There it is. We can make this whatever we'd like. This is a secret token used to access the NCPA API. So I'm going to go ahead and use the string welcome, not very secure. Please make yours more secure than that. And we can go ahead and exit. So after we've changed our community string appropriately, we can go ahead and restart NCPA by calling the listener application and putting the restart directive after it. So you can see it exits and it has started once more. So to make sure that this installation is indeed working, I'm going to contact this machine via its IP address, and I'm just going to use my web browser to browse to it. So first things first, let's check for the IP address of this server, it's 4.72. And what I'll do is I'll actually check on which port NCPA is listening on. You can see that it is listening on port 5693. So we'll put up port 5693 after this, and I know that NCPA uses an encrypted web server by default. So this will be uh, HTTPS. Press advanced, I'll go ahead and add an exception for this website. Here we can enter the token that we specified earlier, mine was welcome, press enter, and you can see that the NCPA web interface is available to view. You can check out the dashboard, which includes such data as CPU, memory, disks, and network interfaces. In real time, this will show you how much data is being consumed by any of these uh, any of these pieces of your system. You can check on the top processes, which is uh, similar to a top. You can check on any, any amount of graphs that you want to. You can just kind of navigate through the graphs here and look at interesting information as it might pertain to you. Uh, the most important piece of this is, of course, the API. So if we click the API, we get an API tree right here. And in this API tree, what we can do is we can actually tunnel into particular parts of the API. So if we want to tunnel into user, we can put user right here, and you can see root root, and you can continue tunneling down if you would like to. This is how you contact and call and make use of the API. So if we go all the way back, let's try uh, processes. And you can see here's a list of the processes running on the Linux machine. This tells you that NCPA is set up properly, that it's listening, that it can detect the information on the system that it's running on, and that it is capable of being monitored from Nagios XI. 
please feel free to watch my Nagios XI video based on monitoring a, uh, a server using NCPA as kind of a follow-up to this video, which uh, showed you how to install NCPA on a Linux server. If you have any questions about that process, please feel free to reach out to us at the support forum. We're always at support.nagios.com forum. Otherwise, feel free to check out our related content at the YouTube channel. Thanks.